present plays from the four corners of the world. Comedy, drama, suspense, true life adventure in Tuesday Theatre. This week in Tuesday Theatre, we present Murder on the Mind by Glenn Day. Distinguished smoking comes to mild cigarettes in king-size length. Dunhill Superior Mild, King Size. A mild, rewarding cigarette in the Dunhill tradition. Made with patience, care and infinite skill to bring mildness to the gentle art of smoking. Now in king size length, Dunhill Superior Mild. From the most distinguished tobacco house in the world. Persia 404 never seems to age. Each day passes as reliably as the last. In a 404, time stands still. Its legendary ruggedness guarantees you years of trouble-free motoring. Persia 404. Drive one now. Hi, Pete. Come on over. Ah, thanks, Tom. Hey, I see you're on to Pilsner, too. Yes, I like to start on beer and stay with it. Pilsner's the answer. It's less filling and, man, it's full of flavor. Mmm, that's Hansa for you. Cheers. Hansa Pilsner is the perfect beer to have when you're having more than one. You get all the true beer satisfaction you want and an average of 24% less carbohydrates. Hansa, for Pilsner lightness. It's a world trend. I say, you're Jarvis, aren't you? Sunday mail? That's right. I don't think... What brings you to London? Are the province is too quiet for you. Oh, no, it's not that. There's a conference on. But uh, are you not connected with the newspaper world, Mr... Uh... Indirectly. Yes, you could say that. <laughs> yes, I am connected with the newspaper world, but only indirectly. Do you ever meet any of the people you write about, Mr. Jarvis? Oh, yes, of course I do, but uh, I don't understand. You don't need to. How long have you been a crime reporter? Look, I don't understand what all this is about. Are you a journalist out for a quick story or something? No, I told you that. Well, then why all the questions? I want some information, Jarvis. Well, what sort of information? Sort of information only you can give me. Well, I wish you would explain. Remember the Parker murders? Parker? Yes, yes, of course I do. You covered that case, didn't you? Rather thoroughly. I mean, right from the beginning. Well, that's my job. Is it? Is it your job to condemn criminals to death, to take sides, to influence the public against innocent persons? Is that your job, Jarvis? I don't think I understand what you're saying. I, I don't know you, and I don't like what I think you're implying, so if you'll excuse me. You haven't heard all I have to say, Jarvis. I don't think I care to. No? Look, I don't know who you are or what you're after. But... Don't you, Jarvis? Look at me, Jarvis. I'm a little older. Fifteen years older, Jarvis. Fifteen? You're Donaldson. Right, first time, Steve Donaldson. Fifteen years in prison changes a man. It makes him look much older than he really is. The features become a little hard, a little sunken, perhaps. Fifteen years is a long time. I've had a lot of time to think, and I don't think you like my thoughts very much. Oh, yes. I've thought about you, Jarvis. What do you want from me? Nothing. Nothing? Then why... Nothing of material value. But I want you to experience some of the mental torture I experienced. For three years, you kept that case alive in your newspaper column. For three years, I sweated, I suffered, because I knew you'd never give up. Oh, yes. You kept at it, building false evidence, making people believe snippets of information which you sucked out of the air, on and on relentlessly hammering it into their heads. 
And then they caught me. Look, if you wanted to attack me, why didn't you do it in court? You've never stood trial for murder, have you? If you had, you would know what it's like to stand there, the palms of your hands sticky and uncomfortable, the sound of your heartbeat like a kettle drum in your ears, the feeling that everybody in that courtroom is whispering, he's guilty, he's guilty, with a slow, unbearable rhythm which grows in your mind until you think your skull's going to crack. Oh, yes. It's easy enough to describe the haggard look of the prisoner, uneasily clasping and unclasping his hands, the trembling lips searching for words. That's easy enough. But have you ever imagined yourself up there? It's hell, Jarvis. You don't know what you're saying half the time. We only know that you're innocent and somehow you've got to prove it. But how? How? You were imprisoned, Donaldson. You weren't given the death sentence. Am I supposed to jump for joy? They found me guilty, didn't they, of being an accessory to murder. There wasn't enough evidence, was there? Why didn't you create some more and have me hanged? I reported what I took to be the facts, that's all. Even if they were wrong? Did you ever bother to find out? I can't remember. It's a long time ago. Do you ever bother to print the truth? Or do you just write to fill up a page, Jarvis? I've asked you before, what do you want? And I've told you. Nothing. Now that I'm free, I plan to become a gardener, Jarvis. And I've just planted my first seeds in your mind. Come on, Liz, we're going. Oh, but it's still early, Stan. Why, what's the matter? You're as white as a sheet. The haggard look of the prisoner. What? Uh, oh, never mind. Oh, come on, let's get away from here. Well, Stan, what happened at that party? Do you remember the Parker murders? Parker? No, I don't think so. Steve Donaldson? No, Stan. He was there tonight. Who was? Donaldson. Well? He uh, he accused me of printing false information about the murders. What? It was a case which intrigued me, Liz. I, I don't think I'll ever forget it, as long as I live. Mr. and Mrs. Parker were victims of what appeared at the outset to be nothing more than a series of sadistic practical jokes in very bad taste. Mm-hmm. You know, the usual mysterious phone calls, just heavy breathing at the other end of the line, anonymous letters, etc. Mm-hmm. Well, they reported it to the police. Old man Parker was pretty wealthy, and they'd retired to a cosy little cottage in the country. Parker alerted the police, as I said, and they, in their small way, tried to help. Yes. The phone calls and letters stopped for a while, and then suddenly they started up again, more threatening than the first time. Mm. They terrorised the old couple until they were nearly demented with fear. I can't remember all the details, but they'd knock on the door of the cottage late at night, throw stones through the windows... And somehow they always managed to evade the police. One morning, the Parkers awoke to find their faithful little spaniel had been murdered in the night. Oh, how terrible. Oh, there's worse to come. More notes arrived, telephone calls, asking for money to be placed at certain almost inaccessible places. Mm -hmm. The Parkers ignored them, and a policeman was put on guard day and night at their home. And then, one night, it was one of those nights when the fog was so thick you couldn't see your hand in front of your face, there was a triple murder. No. The policeman... Mr. and Mrs. Parker. Oh. The murderer escaped undetected. Oh, Scott and Yard did their best, and then after a long, unsuccessful search, the case died down and was shelved as one of the many unsolved murders in the fires at New Scotland Yard. Yes, but you said there was a man named Donaldson involved. Oh, yes, but that came later. Oh. As I said, I was intrigued by the case and incensed that the murderers were allowed to escape Scott free oh, Of course. I kept that case alive in my column for three years. Every couple of months, I'd unearth the unsolved triple murder and splash it across the page with photos of the cottage, the dog, the policeman and the parker. Oh, but I remember now. Donaldson was charged. That's right. He got away with a 20-year prison sentence. There wasn't enough evidence to hang him. But uh, you said he served 15 years. Yes. Oh, he was sentenced to 20, but got a remand for good behaviour. He must have been released this month sometime. But tell me, did he threaten you? In a way, yes, but not directly. He accused me of building the case up out of nothing, Hmm. out of my own imagination. I think he intends to frighten me, Liz, and that's all. And if he does, he's going to find himself back in prison pretty smartly. But surely he wouldn't do that, not after all these years. Who knows? A man's mind can crack after such a long stretch in jail. Liz, quickly, Hmm? see if you can get the number of that car behind us. I'm going to slow down. I can't see, Stan. 
Well, he's slowing down, too. Well, all right. Never mind. Hang on. I'll try and shake him off. All right. Still there. Oh, dear. Bella, I'll bet you anything you like, that's Donaldson. Oh, you can relax, Liz. Oh. He's turned off at the crossroads. Oh, thank goodness. <sighs> yes, he must have realized that we're coming to a built-up area. But why didn't you stop and wait till he passed you? You would have got his number then. No, no. He had to stop, too, and waited. Uh, we're almost home now. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do when I get in. <laughs> What's that? I'm going to pour myself a nice stiff whiskey. <laughs> oh, well, here we are. Oh, honestly, I'm shaking all over. Well, come and sit down. And I'll pour the drinks. Mm. What do you have? I think I'll follow suit, Stan. All right. Two stiff whiskeys coming up. <laughs> Listen, tell me, are you going to inform the police? And about Donaldson? Mm. No, I think I'll wait a while and see what happens. If that was him following us, we'll be hearing from him again pretty soon, I'm sure of that. Oh. Who knows, he may just leave us alone after all. Well, I do hope so, Stan. I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight thinking about it. <laughs> you will, after this. <laughs> oh, I wonder how he got to that party and how he knew I'd be there. Well, there were so many people there. An extra one wouldn't have been noticed. And it was composed almost completely of journalists. Yes, he'd probably phoned the office and asked for me. Mm, mm. They must have told him. Mm. I think I'll look up that case tomorrow. It seems it a long time ago. <gasps> oh. Now, who can that be? Oh, no, he couldn't be so stupid. Hello? Hello? Hello, Jarvis. I just phoned to say good night. Sweet dream. Hello? Hello? Donaldson! There is a corner of the vineyard selected for Montac. Montac Vino Blanco Selecto. A selected wine in the Spanish tradition. Born of the finest white grapes, harvested from the most bountiful soil. Montac, a wine fit for noblemen, endowed with all the richness and nobility that nature alone can bestow. Montac, vino blanco selecto. Montac. Marquis. This is the smoking taste you can tell blindfolded. This is Marquis. Marquis is the filter tip cigarillo with a difference. As mild and smooth smoking as a cigarette. If you're a cigarette smoker, Marquis is made for you. Try one. You'll enjoy the difference. Marquis. It's sensational. Double velvet, the new wall paint from Plascon Evans. It looks like velvet, it feels like velvet in its delicate glow. Makes every room come alive. Plascon Evans, double velvet. There's never been a paint like it. Double velvet with the look of luxury and the feel of luxury. Double velvet. From Plascon Evans. You've never stood trial for murder, have you? The palms of your hands sticky and uncomfortable. The sound of your heart beat like a kettle drum in your ears. A slow, unbearable rhythm which grows in your mind until you think your skull's going to crack. You all right, Mr. Jarvis? Uh, what? Oh, John. Uh, yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm just dreaming a little. You're not looking so well, if I may say so, sir. No, I'm a little tired, that's all. Uh, anything interesting in the newsroom? Oh, the usual. Do you want me to take that copy through for typesetting, sir? Uh, yes, please, John. The other proofs come through yet? No, sir. Shall I check them up for you? Uh, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me. I can't seem to concentrate anymore. Perhaps you need a holiday, sir. No. I think I need to retire and leave reporting to young people like you. No. New blood, new ideas. 
The ink in my blood is drying up. If you don't mind me saying so, sir, I don't think this paper would be the same without your column in it. Oh, thank you, my boy. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, just close the door for me, John. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello? Hello, Jarvis. How are you? Donaldson! Will you leave me alone? But I have, Jarvis, for at least two days. I've asked you before. What do you want? Not money, Jarvis. I'm not like you. By the way, how much did Fraser pay you? Fraser? Who the hell is Fraser? You don't know. No, darn you. know jolly well I don't. Strange. Now, come, come. Your memory can't be that bad, old boy. I warn you, Donaldson. If you don't get off my back, I'll put the police onto you. And you'll be back behind bars before you know where you are. Really? It's been two weeks since the party, Jarvis. Why only now? Why haven't you phoned them before now? Oh, because... Oh, because... Because you're scared, aren't you? Because you do remember Fraser. You're feeling just a little bit guilty, aren't you? No. No! Control yourself, Jarvis. That's not good for you, you know. Not good for you at all. Who is Fraser? It's a pity I have to spell it out for you, Jarvis. Fraser... Is the man who killed one dog, one policeman, and two parkers. What? Donaldson! Donaldson! What's the matter, sir? Who's that? Mind your own business, boy. What the blazes do you think you're doing here? Yeah, Get but... out at once. Yeah, but... Get out! <laughs> Why don't you phone the police, Stan? No. Don't you see? That's just what he wants, Liz. And as soon as I do, he'll, he'll lay off. But wouldn't that be better for both of us? Look, Liz, there's more to this than you know. I I told you the case intrigued me, and it must have seemed to you that my pursuit of justice was purely humanitarian. Well, it wasn't. But you, you mean Donaldson's right? Oh, no, 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 he's not. But He's built up a completely false picture, but I'm not guiltless either. Oh, I was being paid a large sum of money by a man named Richardson to keep the case in the public's eye. Oh, but I, I didn't know his motives. I didn't even question him. But it must have had something to do with Fraser. Fraser? Well, Donaldson phoned me at the office today. Yes? He said that it was someone called Fraser who committed the murders. Oh, but is there any way of checking up? What about the police file? They must have something on Fraser. Oh, I did that. I phoned Travers. There was a Fraser up for blackmail about 16 years ago. Apparently, he left the country in 1965... As far as they know, he is now living in France somewhere. And Richardson? Well, what about this Richardson, the man who was paying you? No, a complete blank. Stan? Yes? Why did you accept the money? Why does anybody do that sort of thing? I, I needed it. We were struggling then to build a home. It, it, it wasn't all that much. And, and I honestly thought that it was a case which should be pursued. I, I didn't think... That... What do you think now? I think I should give up leave here. But why? Because of one man with a vengeance? Look, if he's not a murderer, he won't commit murder now, surely. And if he tries, the police will step in. Oh, in fact, I still think you should phone them, Stan. Oh, please listen to me. No. But what have you got to lose? Are you too proud? Is that it? Do you want to run away like a criminal? A criminal? He asked me if I knew what a criminal felt like. I, I think I do now. I keep looking over my shoulder and wondering if somebody is following me. My eyes keep flicking to the rearview mirror when I'm driving to and from work. I keep waiting for the phone to ring, looking out for the mail, for anonymous letters. Oh, Stan. He's playing on my nerves. He wants me to break down completely. That's his game, and, and I can't play it any longer. I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Jarvis, Mr. Jarvis. Sir. What? Who are you? It, it's John, sir. John? Did Donaldson send you? Donaldson? Yes. Oh, I know your game. There are a whole lot of you, aren't there? I, I brought your proofs back, sir. Proofs? Are we running another story on the Parker murders? Oh, the truth this time. Is that it? Is that what you want? A double page spread? Eh? What do you think? Photos of the dog, the policeman, old Parker and his wife. And then right at the top. A photo of Stanley Jarvis, criminal. How does that sound? The crime story of the year. Go ahead and write it, my boy. 
It'll make your name for you. You want that, don't you? I don't know what you mean, sir. Don't you? Then read this letter, then. Letter? Go on, read it. All right, sir. Out loud, so that my ears can hear what my eyes fail to see. Jarvis, your time is running out. Fraser was Richardson's stepbrother. A fact I'm sure you knew. But perhaps you didn't know that Richardson died in Versailles on the 14th of June, 1970. The last person to see him alive was Fraser. Do you feel like printing this information? That's all, sir. Oh, it's not enough. I don't understand, sir. Who wrote this letter to you? An innocent man who spent 15 years in prison. That must have been hell. Can you imagine what it must be like? Fifteen years is a long time. Oh, I'm too old now. Too old to understand. I mean, really understand. Oh, come and get me, Donaldson. No, sir, I... I can't go on anymore. You tell Donaldson to come and get me. I, I, I think you ought to go home, sir. Can I drive you back? Go away from me. Leave sir, me alone. I... I'll walk. I... I'll walk. <laughs> Walked, Donaldson, as if I were a ruddy dog. <laughs> and you walked. <laughs> you know what I did? Huh? I stopped just where I was and didn't budge. I wasn't going to be pushed around by anybody. I was innocent. And that ruddy prison warder knew it, too. Jarvis knows it now. And he's going through what I went through, and I'm glad. <laughs> What's she going to do to him, Steve? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? I'd make him pay for what he did to you. If I was you, I'd make him suffer. Well, you're not me, so shut up. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You scared? Of course I'm not scared. Well, then why don't you beat him up? I would. I'd make him suffer, I tell you. Really suffer. He knows, Fred. He knows what it is to suffer. He's suffering right now. He's running away from me. He doesn't know where I am, and he doesn't know where he's running to. I'm innocent, and he knows it. Yeah, but who else knows? Is he going to print an apology so everybody can read it? <laughs> Never. No, he doesn't need to. You should have heard his voice on the phone this afternoon. <laughs> I've broken him good and proper. He's finished as a newspaper man, finished. That's not enough, Steve. You know it. You've got to do the job properly. You've got to break him so he'll never write again. Is that what you would do? Yeah. I'd break him the way a swine like that deserves to be broken. By force. I'm not a violent type. Never have been. Yeah, you're a coward. Coward? No, I don't think I am. I don't think I have any reason to be brave either. I shouldn't have done it. Hasn't made me any easier. Uh, what are you talking about? It's justice, that's what. You'd feel easier if you smashed him up. That's what I'd do. And I wouldn't pull any punches either. It's not my way of working, and never has been. Someday I'll teach you how to pay back debts. The right way. You won't have to teach me. Because I won't be jailed for murder, Steve. You will. You continue to threaten people the way you do. Where are you going? To find Jarvis. What for? Say goodbye. I think he's had enough. Don't you? Hello? Mrs. Jarvis? Hmm? It's John Harris. Oh, yes, John. Has, has Mr. Jarvis arrived, arrived home yet? Well, no, John... I thought he might be working late. He often does the night before the paper goes to bed. But is he not there with you? No, Mrs. Jarvis. He, uh, he, he was in a bit of a state. Oh. I, I suggested he went home. Hmm. He left about an hour ago. He said he was going to walk. Oh, John. Well, what do I do? No, d don't you worry too much, Mrs. Jarvis. I'll see if I can find him. Oh, good. I'll ring you back. Stop following me. Stop following me, Donaldson. Leave me alone. 
I didn't want to do it. I didn't. But he offered me money, I, and I needed that money badly. I, I couldn't refuse, you see, and he, he was going to kill me if I did. You understand? I, I knew you were innocent. You see, he knew that Fraser was safe, and if I could find someone else and have him convicted, well, there would be no danger, no danger at all. You do see that, don't you, Donaldson? It grows in your mind until you think your skull is going to crack. You've never stood trial for murder, have you? Have you ever imagined yourself up there? It's hell, Jarvis. You don't know what you're saying half the time. You only know that you're innocent and somehow you've got to prove it. But how? How? I don't know how. I want you to leave me alone. No. No, Jarvis. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. What's happened? Where is he? I'm very sorry. I... John. He... He's dead, isn't he? Yes. Oh, was it. Was it Donaldson? No. Donaldson was waiting at the office. What? It was a late night news van. Oh. Accident. Driver tried to swerve. Lexington, for after action satisfaction. For a flavor break when you've had your action, reach for smoke and satisfaction. Alive with flavor that's number one, man relax with a Lexington. Lexington, that's the one. When it's time to relax, that, believe me, is Lexington time. Time for Lexington's real honest-to-goodness tobacco flavor. Lexington, that's the one. For generations, the cellar masters of the house of Von Ring have handed down the careful, unhurried art of making fine brandy. An art that has culminated in the creation of Viceroy Old Liqueur Brandy. Select Viceroy, the brandy of matchless maturity. Viceroy. Full-bodied, fresh roast flavor. Frisco is for real coffee lovers. Real coffee is what you get in your cup. And Frisco gives you the greatest coffee value ever. The aroma. The full, friendly flavor. The good, strong, satisfying taste. Frisco is choice coffee beans roasted to perfection. Frisco. Coffee at its best. In Tuesday Theatre, you heard Murder on the Mind, written and produced by Glenn Day, with James Irwin as Stan Jarvis, Harold Freed as Steve Donaldson, Valerie Miller-Brown as Liz, and Jack Claff as John. The play was directed by Henry Diffenthal. Listen again next week when once again we bring you a comedy, a drama, or a play of suspense in Tuesday Theatre.